But today I'm here to talk about like how to build native apps with Meteor. And usually I see a lot of people asking these questions. And in some cases, it seems to be like very hard. And I know native apps is not like the easiest thing in the world because it's kind of hard because you have a lot of configurations. But with Meteor, it's a little bit better because you can see, you can have like integrations like Cordova and we have other options as well that I'm going to show a little bit. And, but the idea here, like I start like an app two days ago. So I invest in this app like eight hours, maybe even less, maybe. And just to show like it's possible to create an app uh, that can look good and work in, in actual device uh, pretty fast with Meteor. And most of this time I didn't spend like try to configure the app. I spent most of this time like creating a game because I decided to, to write this game for this presentation. So first let's remember what is Meteor about, like at least in my opinion. Uh, Meteor is about like real apps, real users and real results. So like Meteor, in my opinion, is the best platform for you if you want to really build a business or like create something that provide value to others because you can focus just in your code. And in this talk, we are going to see an app that's using like Meteor, Cordova, Methods, Publications, React, Tailwind, CSS, OneSignal, Fastlane, and much more. And maybe you are wondering like why Meteor and why Cordova? Uh, like just a, a quick summary here. But for me, Meteor is great to build web single page applications. And that's what we are building here. Cordova is, in my opinion, the easiest way to wrap web apps. So it's very simple to get a web code and publish this code as a native app in the stores. And we also have a plugin so you can access the native environment as you are going to see with publish notifications in this example. And with these two technologies, we can, we can bring our web to the stores in a matter of hours, not weeks or months. And in many cases, like we need to build different apps if you use other technologies, one for web, one for native, and one for iOS and Android. And so that's not the case. That's why I, I really like Cordova. I know there are other alternatives and maybe in a few cases, Cordova is not a good fit. And just to list here, but this talk is not about these other alternatives. We also have mature integration with React Native. So you can check this link later if you didn't know about it. And we even have also a package for Flutter with Meteor. So we can connect a Flutter front end with a Meteor backend. So you can use DDP. And I think most of the users in Meteor, they love DDP. So it, it's very nice to combine like Flutter and also DDP in the backend. But before I proceed, let me present myself because I, 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 I don't think I even said my name. Like I'm Philip Nevola. Uh, in the past, I was a Java architect that was like many years ago, but some people that are here, they know me from this time. Uh, later, I migrate to JavaScript. And I think now, like for almost nine years, I'm coding with JavaScript almost every week. Uh, I have been building like production apps with Meteor since 2013. So it's a long time already. I was, uh, I, I'm still is, but like my role official was like in the end of 2019, I was Meteor evangelist. And then today, a few months from now, like uh, my role is Meteor CEO. So I'm here to help you and to also help Meteor to, to grow and to expand with more users. And of course, also Meteor Cloud with our clients. Before I proceed, let me just check the chat. If you have any questions, is my internet like, okay? I'm just checking here because I, I can't see. Can I proceed? Is everything okay? Okay, so let's get back to my presentation. So what we are going to, to build to today, actually we are not going to code, at least not a lot together, but you can do some things if you if you want to see. But the context for, for this game that I'm creating here, it's a very simple game, but I used to play this game with my father. And my father invented this game. It's a very simple game as you're going to see in a minute. Like we just used two words, and one is a real word that's called amigo. It's like friend in Portuguese. And the other word is not a real word, is akiko. It's like a, a wrong way to say amigo. So the game is like, I would say akiko amigo. And then my father would reply amigo akiko. So we need to reverse whatever they said, the, the, the other players said before. 
But the challenge is when you start to put a lot of words there, like amigo aqui com aqui com aqui com amigo. So you need to remember what was the order and you need to flip between Akiko and Amigo. So it's a very silly game, but it was fun for me when I was a kid and I used to play with my father. And so I decided to recreate this game to provide a better context for us to talk about native apps because usually you just, oh, that, this is a to-do list. So check the to-do list and create tasks. So I would like to provide a different approach in this talk here. That's why I started this app two days ago. Okay, and why a native app that is a game? Like, I think the best reason for this, besides that I didn't want to create a crude or a to-do list, so that I think is the first reason. But the second reason is, is push notification. So in, a, in games, it's nice to communicate with the other player. In this case, it's like a two-player game. And the push notifications are helpful so you can send the message. And we are almost sure that these messages are going to be delivered because otherwise, unless the user like unsubscribed or blocked your app, he is going to see the message in the list of notifications. So it's better than email, it's better than SMS in many cases. And, and also that's what I'm going to use here. So that's one important reason for push. And if you are wondering like, but can I send push in other ways? Yes, you can on Android. You can use a PWA to send push. So you can talk about this if you want later. But for iOS, they are blocking any kind of push notification so far. I believe in the future, they are going to allow PWAs to also send push there, but for now, only with a native app. So if your app needs to send message to your user directly without like email or SMS inside the, mess, inside the app, or at least to open the app, you need to have a native app. So that's that's one reason that is important. Uh, let's check again the chat if you have any questions about the game. Uh, I don't think so. So I'm going to proceed. So before I start to talk about this specific app, and I'm going to show code, of course, uh, I would like, where is my course? I'm not sure. I would like to review a little bit about what you can do with native apps and with Meteor, but it's pretty fast. Like I talked about this in my talk on Meteor Impact last year. I put the link here in the slides later, but now I'm just going to review pretty fast the items here. Like we can have the native app in the stores. So we have like a place for people to reach your app. We can also have in Google and iOS store. This is the, the Google example. We can also have universal links that is important for your app. Like if the user click a link, like when you click a link in, let's see, like in Facebook, like a Facebook link, you open the Facebook app. So that's that's how it works. You need to implement universal links. And I also have a few feature packages there that can help you. So when user click a link, they can go to your app directly. As I said already, like push notifications, I think that's the number one reason for people to build native apps. Another feature that's not very cool that you can do with Meteor and not with uh, many of the other frameworks for native, that you can update your code without uh, going to the stores. Of course, you can't do this like change completely your app because you're going to be removed from the stores, but just to release quick fix and, and small updates, you can do that. And also the patch that is linked there, you can even provide a pop-up for your users to decide when is the best time to to replace the code there. So you can hot code push uh, the code. So it's it's pretty nice. And we also have packages that you can authenticate with like Apple authentication, Facebook authentication that works like natively. It's not going to work in a weird way. It's going to work as a native app too. So it's, it's really nice. So that's a, just a quick summary. So you know other options, but we are not going to talk about all these options today. And as we are building like with web technologies behind our native app, you can also benefit from PWA. So you can also publish in a URL like here, and you can also have a PWA that's going to be installed in your phone as well. And you can even install on Windows. So it's nice that you have this flexibility. So we are building one code base and you can use all the other options. But if you want to, to know more about like what are all the options that I have with Meteor. In this talk here, especially in the part two, I show a real app that I have built and you can see like everything that you can do with Meteor basically is, is being used in this app. Like we are using GraphQL, we are using 
uh, SSR you're using many other technologies that integrated nicely with Meteor. So that's another talk that you can check there later. But enough talking, let's see some code. But before, what are you going to see today? Like, as I said, I started this app on Wednesday. So it's not a complete app, quite the opposite. Like it's, I'm just starting this app, but I want to show you like how much I was able to do in like maybe eight hours, six hours. And I'm going to do like a quick code review. And later I'm going to show how to run on iOS, how to run on Android. Uh, I will explain like the mobile setup that I did. Also the assets, that's a part that is really annoying, but I, I have a few steps you can follow. Also push notification, how I am using it, how to set up it and how to build your app because in the end Android is going to build your APK. Uh, Renault even has a PR open that's going to change this in the next month for Android apps. And for iOS, you are going to build APIs, I, IPIs, I don't remember the, the name, but it's IPA in Portuguese. And, and also how to publish use the fast lane. I think that part's really cool. So you can just run on command and publish your apps to Android and to, to iOS stores. Okay. So let's go to the code. And it's important that we're going to have a QA time, but you can stop like in the middle when I'm talking and you can just ask questions because that's the idea here. The idea is that I'm going to show you some things that I did, but you need to ask questions because otherwise I'm, I'm going to be just talking and talking nonstop. So like the presentation is over. Later I have some slides just with a few links, but like the presentation is over now. Now we're going to talk about code and you can also ask questions. So this is the, the important part now. And let's see if you already have some questions. Yeah, Rena is saying here that the bundle files will be different in for Android. And we already have a PR that I think was measured today. So it's going to be available pretty, pretty soon. So let's, let me show just like my simulators here or emulator. We have two, like in the left side, this one is for Android. It's a little bit ugly. I don't know why the Android emulator, at least my machine usually is like scudding the edges. It's weird, the colors, <laughs> but maybe Rena knows why, but it's usually like this. But the iOS one usually is, is pretty and, and looks better. Okay. So, and this is the app I already run one time here, of course, because I was testing it, but let's go to the, to the code first. And again, guys, it's really important that you ask questions because otherwise it'll be boring, like just listening to me like for one hour. So if you have any questions, please ask your questions. And even if you want to ask in Portuguese and I can try to explain Portuguese as well. Okay. So let's start from the main code in the client. As you should expect, is the code available? Uh, Fred is asking if is the code is available in our repo. It's going to be available. It's not available yet because I need to check the terms because I, I have a paid uh, Tailwind component and I'm using this paid component and I was not sure if I can share. I think as it's going to be open source, I can just put a note there that is a paid component. So you should not copy paste and use it but I need to double check. That's why I, it's in a private repo right now, but it's going to be public later. I just need to check the license to not commit a crime here. Okay, so let me increase the font size a little bit. I think it would be better. Okay, as you should expect, as I said, we are using web technologies here. So the code, let me put this in the bottom. So the code's the same as a, as a web app with React. And that's cool because you don't need to learn like a whole new framework to just put your code on web, on, on native apps. We also have our main HTML file. It's pretty much the same as you should expect it as well. Uh, we, we have like a PWA JSON here, but it's not required for native apps. We have the favicon that's also not required for native apps. These configurations are important, so your view is like in a best, in the better way for you to be like in a small screen. Like if I remove this, and you are going to see like the the page will be very very small in the in the top corner. So it's better to set these configurations here. Of course, you can change a little bit. I think there is one like this user is scalable, 
that's not going to provide the pinch for the user to zoom in and zoom out. And in some cases, this is bad because like for accessibility, maybe it's good to be able to zoom in in a text. But usually this is the setup that I use on my apps. UTF-8 is just like the encoding, and this is just also for, for Edge. And this is just for Apple to, to be able to understand that this is a, is a web app as well, not just like a website. But it's not important for native, it's just important for web. Okay, let me see my other window here, no questions. And also my CSS, as I said, I'm going, I'm using Tailwind here, so I'm just import Tailwind. So this is my basic setup for, for the client, and later we can go deep in the app. But I'm not going to spend all the time explaining the game because the game is not important here. It was just like a, a good excuse to implement this game. And we also have in the server, again, as you should expect, like the server is the same server. And we just have a few methods here and just one publication. It's a pretty small app. And I think that's it. Uh, so let's let's see how the game works just really fast. Uh, yeah, uh, some I don't know the name because it's just DX here, but DX is saying, can you please walk us through your mobile config? Yes, I'm going to walk through the mobile config because it's, it's really important. Uh, content security policy in the main. Thiago is asking, like, you don't set up a content security policy in the main. No, I didn't. Like, I'm just like creating this app for this presentation here. Later, we can create this open source repo, and it would be nice if you could like continue this game together. I think there are many things that you could do in this game. Okay. So the first thing that you can see here, of course, it's like my father and me but like it's missing the header because I was trying to put the header just before the presentation, but it was not ready yet. It was working, but it was kind of blue around. And you can also see as a website here, okay? And you can see like the wings adapting to the size and it, it looks nice. And to play the game, you just need to click like start to play. And then I need to print a sequence. Like I need to say, okay, I'm going to start with Akiko and Amigo. And then I'm going to send this sequence to my friend. So let me get my Android emulator here. Yeah, my Android emulator is here. So I'm going to, I already have an account. I'm going to, oh, sorry. I'm going to authenticate here. Oh, these password managers, they are a mess. Oh my God. Okay. I think my user is Felipe Nevola. Felipe Mitchell here. Okay, I am authenticated now, and I'm going to send to my other email that is philippemkvgmail.com. So I'm going to send here. I don't think you can, I do, did you hear the notification sound? But that means that you have a new notification here in my native app. So what the message says, like new sequence with two words from your friend Philip Chu. Like this user is Philip Chu, this user is just Philip. So if I click here, it's going to load my app with a splash screen. You don't need to use like any like weird part here. And we can also redirect the user for a specific page. Did you see that it loads in the home page and then it was redirected to, to a specific page? I could also put like a loading instead of the home page and then redirect directly. You can do whatever you want. We are going to check this code together. So now what I need to do in this, like from to play the game, I need to memorize like a Kiko Amigo. And then I need to revert. I need to say Amigo a Kiko. So let's do this. I'm ready to answer. So Amigo a Kiko in the reverse. And I'm going to send my answer. It was a match. Your sequence was perfect. Congratulations. Blah, blah, blah. And I can do the same here and I can send another sequence to my friend and I could keep playing this game like back and forth, like if I, if I would like to just play the game, but that's not the purpose here. So what's nice here is that if it, even if I send, like let me send another sequence here, I will send to the same one because it's the push notification that's set in the other side. And if the app is already open, one signal is going to show this internal pop-up here. And if the user click OK, it's going to go to the URL as well. So if the app is closed, it's going to be a push notification. If the app is open, 
it's going to be like a pop-up and then the user is going to go to the URL. So we are going to see how this works behind the scenes. I'm not going to answer this because I think you got the idea. Okay. Any questions so far or about the game or about the, the app? Otherwise, we are going to go to the code again to understand how all this is working behind the scenes. Any questions? I'm going to click some more. No, uh, Gustavo is asking if it's one signal is part of Meteor. No, well, signal is a company. They they have many messaging related services. Like I think they even have emails, SMS, mobile push, and a lot of other things. And it's free, like for like simple web push, web and push notifications. You can even check. I know. I think I am. Yeah, I'm not in an anonymous window. Like I create the Akiko Amigo here, so we can we can see that I have just one user, just my my simulator. And it's it's nice that you can see, for example. Uh, you can see here that I have like iOS simulator because you sh I showed you like both, but it's not supporting like pushing iOS simulator. If you want to test on iOS, you need to have a real device. It's a limitation, but it's not a major limitation. It's just how it works. And this one is Android and it works in the emulator. That's why I showed in the emulator this part. Okay. So this is one signal. And another thing that I think is really nice and I was using this like just today. Let me close this and I can go to a signal here and I can send a message. And I can even put like my route because I, I will show later how I did this, but like I have my route here. Like let's put game is the page that I, I go to start a new game. Then I send it to the test device and I can select my simulator here and my message is here. So it's a really, really nice way because when you are developing, maybe you want to include a picture, maybe you want to include a preview. So you want to see how it looks. And they also have this nice preview here. And you can also send the message to specific users. And I sent to the test device, but you could send even for your real users. That's not a problem. So you can use like a campaign tool where you can come here and you can write your messages and send to your users. And if I click here, it's going to load. And it's going to go to the game page probably because I believe I put there. Yeah, it's going to go to the game page because I put the route here and you are going to see how I use this route in the in the code part. Any other questions about one signal? And that's the kind of question that I want to hear because I want to show like this other parts, not just the code, the environment around the native environment. No? Okay. So first, how to show the icon app in the Android notification? Uh, Thiago is asking how to show the icon in the notification as we are showing here. I believe he's asking this because he already tried and it, seem, it sounds simple, but it's not. I don't know why it's that complicated. Like you can throw API. I think you are asking about the icon and I have these instructions here and I am going to post an update after this call in these instructions, but like the push notification icon is somewhere here. Where is it? Yeah. Here you can read how you, you put your notification there. And like that was the part that I was going to, to show you. Like everything that I did, I did follow in this tutorial that I wrote a few years ago and I'm updating it because sometimes the stars, they change some things. So you can just read here step by step how to create your app in the store, how to publish for the first time and how to set up push notifications. Everything here is like step by step. So you can, you can use this as a guide as I used to create this app like two days ago, because the last time that I created an app was like maybe one year ago. So I had to read here to remember all the steps. Now Thiago is asking, is not possible to show the standard icon without adding more assets? As far as I know, on iOS, that's how it works. Like it's just the default icon, but for Android, you need to put your custom icon there. It can be the same, but you need to, to create these new assets here. 
And you could even improve in Meteor, and instead of having this overhide, you could support these assets in a different way. That's something that we want to, to, to do next. Like we want to improve like these steps, trying to reduce as much as possible, incorporating these steps in the framework and in the integration between Meteor and native platforms. Okay, I'm going to proceed. Like the first part that I want to show is like the, the mobile configuration here. Thiago is saying this guide is excellent. Thank you. <laughs> I, I wrote this guide for myself because it's really hard to remember all the steps. So uh, I didn't show the link like Meteor slash examples slash Cordova. And I'm going to push like new new updates to this to this file. So let's try to understand this mobile config. So if you are new to Meteor and Cordova, Meteor has two important files related to Cordova. The first one is inside dot meter that are the Cordova plugins. And the second one is mobile config. Like you can see mobile config as like a big mapping, trying to translate your options here to config XML. That is the main file from the Cordova perspective. So we don't need to write this XML, but you can put a lot of configurations here that are going to be converted by meter to, the, to this XML. And also you can put specific XML if you need here, like in this part. So let's try to, to understand what we are doing here because almost everything that is here is really important. Okay, so the first part here is just like a way that I created to try to, to bump the versions because in mobile you have the version, you also have the build number. So to have a correlation between the version and the build number, I create this way that I just do a simple math here and I, I split the version. So in our process, like when I have these apps, usually I run this process in, in a CI. So I have a process where before I, before I make a release, uh, I can even post this script later if you would like, that I'm going to bump the version here. So I bump this version automatically so I can increase the build number automatically as well. So because if you don't increase the build number, when you submit your app to the stores, it's going to say that this build is already there. So you always need to bump your build number. You can build just one, two, three, but this way you have a relationship between the build number and the version number. That's the way that I prefer, but it's not required. It can be any sequential number. Uh, we also have like a few paths here, just to be easy to, to see the paths for the icons and the splash screens. Like this part, I said it's a pain, but if you follow this guide here, I am explaining like how to generate this and I just did this yesterday. Like I think it took me maybe 20 minutes or even less to do this. Like the first time I think it, it took weeks for me to complete this work. But now we have all the instructions here and also you can upload your icon and your splash screen in this page and it's going to generate the variations to you. But you need to follow these instructions. Otherwise, it's going to be cutting maybe your icon. It's going to be weird, your proportion. So you need to be aware of these rules. And if you just follow line by line here, you're going to, to learn how to, which check marks to mark here, which options to choose here. Everything is explained here. Okay. So that was what I did to generate the assets. And later we get a zip and then you copy the content of this folder inside the zip and you, you place here, in this case, in these locations here. And if you see, they are here. Assets, REST. You don't need to use this specific folder inside private. If you don't want to include this in your report, you could store this in a different folder, but then you need to update these directions here, okay? So I'm going to skip to this part, later I return to the top. So you can finish this. And then you have these app icons and you have a lot of variations. But the good part about this, like these names are exactly equal the names that this guy generated. So you don't need to do anything. You just go here, upload two photos, select a few options, generate the zip and then copy and paste and it's done. So that's the idea with these examples here. And the same for splash screen. And for the splash screen, as you can see as the last option here, you also need to rename uh, this file to a different name because that's the only file that the name is wrong in this generator. And so you can also update here 
the name to use this universal. Like splash screen have different ways to define splash screen on iOS, but that's the easiest way that I believe for my apps at least it's usually the way that I do. Okay. And so that's about the assets, because if you are doing this for the first time without a guide, you are going to spend weeks trying to figure out what are the correct assets. So it's better to just follow this guide because it's working. So we also have a, a, an idea here that I created a few years ago to try to, to simplify the process when you need to have a staging app and a production app and a development app. And even like in a few clients that I work in the past, we can generate multiple apps using the same idea. So you can just change a few settings and then your app can be a different app with different content, different database, different URLs, everything. But the idea is simple. The idea is like this file is going to be parsed by a node process. So it's just a plain JavaScript, but in the end, Meteor is going to call this file using node. So you can inject environment in env in, in variables here. So I'm injecting this mobile mobile app. If you see the way that I run my app here, I provide like mobile app and my app name. So this Envivar is going to go here and you can just define a few parameters here by the app name and not like the same parameter. That's useful. Like if you want to have like a staging app pointing maybe to a different server, a different domain, a different one signal app. So you can have this configuration, just change uh, the variable here. So it's really useful. I have been using this for like maybe five years and it's, it's really helpful. If you do this in a different way, like feel free to share as well, because maybe you have a better way to do this, but that's the way that I'm doing for, for many years without any problems. And it's, it's really nice. Okay. So you can have multiple configurations in the same repository. And with this, I am just like setting a few parameters here, as I said. I also have some like, as this is just like JavaScript code, I can try to find some weird characters here and just remove because Apple has some stricted rules about app names. We can also put like some things that are never going to change here if you want. Uh, and okay, that's this part that you can customize. And you can also customize like background color, status bar, background color. Let me try to show you in a real app why, like this part here, this background color, if I'm not mistaken, like do you see this blue here? It's because my app is not going to the bottom. So it's going to complete with blue. Maybe blue is not the best choice here because my background is white, but that's the idea. And I don't, I don't think, I don't, I'm not sure if this works in the same way. Can you see here? My, my icon was close to the bottom, the, to the, to the edges. Yeah, here it's not doing anything, but on Android, as you can see, it's, it's doing it. Like, can you see? It's not completing here, but it's completing here. So it's an option if you want to have like, like a default background color. This is usually useful sometimes because like maybe your app is loading, then you can, you can show a color and it's going to be the same color, usually as your status bar. That's the second part, like we have a status bar here and the status bar is this, is this blue color in the top, okay? So you can customize this. You also have a way that you can change this in runtime. Let's suppose that when you click Amigo, you, you want to be green. And when you click a, a Kiko, you want to be blue. That's also possible but then you need to change in a different way using JavaScript and a Cordova plugin to replace the, the status bar color. And the last part here of these three configurations is about how, which the color that we're going to use in this part here for the text. Can you see that the text is white? Maybe you open an app and you're going to see it's black and in some uh, apps it's going to be white. It's because of this color here. So you can choose the style and of course, that's going to depend on the color here, because if you put white and you choose light content, it's going to be white on white. So it's going to be impossible to, to read. Please send a message here from time to time so I know that my hotel internet is working. Are you there? I'm not speaking alone. Okay. okay. So let's proceed. Uh, more configurations. Like we have this, this were configurations they are like a fallback they are not required but in some cases like in very very slow cell phones 
uh, maybe this could be a problem. Maybe your app is going to take a long time to start up. So you can put some long timeouts here so you don't have this problem. We even have like a, a problem that you had in the past here, like we have a link. So you can understand what was the case. Like you can see this weird message. And if you put the configuration that it's not going to happen. That's not going to happen like for fast phones. As you can see, like in the simulator, it opens really fast. But if you have like very slow phones, maybe that's going to be a problem. I also have more configurations here now about one signal. One signal, we have an app ID there that you can see here. So with this app ID, one signal is able to do what I just showed you here. Like we put the ID there, so one signal can understand like, okay, this is the app. So when a new app is accepts to have push notification, one signal is going to register as a user here. So that's why one signal knows like this is the app because I'm using the, the app ID here, okay? So this is really important if you want to use push notification. And we are going to see that I also use this configuration inside my app. That's why I'm providing as a preference here, because you can use a Cordova plugin to fetch these preferences inside your application. I'm not going to talk much about Universal Link here, but you need to know that you need to have this configuration as well. Otherwise, yes, it's not going to work and you need to do some parts in the in your code. If you have more questions after this, this call, we can have another meetup or another meeting about more details. And this is just like a getting started and you can keep going with this app and implementing more features. And I think this could be a really nice way to learn together. Oh, this is just a mistake because it's set twice here. Like you don't need to set twice. You can just remove this. Here, I'm like very open with my rules because I, I think when I created this first configuration, it was like in an, an app that people are going to share links, then it could navigate everywhere. In this case, we don't need to have this, like you don't need to open navigation in network for all the URLs, but that's, it's possible. You also need to be careful because if you are using like external CDNs and other things, especially for Apple, you need to allow these domains to be to be accessed from your app and also for authentication. So here's just one example with a lot of settings, but if you are having any issues with authentications or errors, weird errors about network, double check if you are allowing like requests to these specific domains. I already explained about the assets. And so to wrap up, I already explained about this one. That is the best way in my opinion to configure a splash screen on iOS. It's good to also set your target SDK and also your minimum SDK. Sometimes some plugins are going to complain. If you are using like 20 here and your plugin is expecting like 22, it can produce some errors. Uh, Universal links, you also, also need this to be able to have this idea that I said to you, like the user is going to click your link, but it's going to open the app and not the browser. So that's really important. And this is only important for development, I believe but it's important for you to be able to have hot code push working. As I said, you can change your code in production without providing to the stores first, waiting for the approval. And that also happens in development. When you change code and you, you can do this in a second, then your app is going to read a new code from your, from your terminal file here. So I, I believe that's why you need to put this. That was a problem. If you don't put this, it's not, it was not working to fetch the new code in development. I believe Thiago asked to, to go over this file. Any questions about mobile config? Like the next step is to see how push notification is working. Okay. Uh, okay. So as I said, I'm not going to explain the game, like the code that creates the game because it makes no sense for this call, but let me open here one file that I have that's called one signal. Okay, so when my app starts, how do I register my device? Because I need to have some way to get this player ID here in my database, because later, later I need to get this player ID and send to one signal API so one signal knows which is the device that is waiting my, my notification. 
And if you check my database here, you are going to see, oh, my app is not running, sorry. I'm using the embedded database in Meteor. Let me run the Android one. I can also explain this. So like I, I need to provide this to be able to select the correct settings. So run Android and you can use Android device here if you want to run in an actual device that is connecting the USB. I need to provide my settings because I have my keys here. I'm not going to show the settings because I have sensitive keys there. And you can exclude some args if you don't want Meteor to build like a legacy because you are not using like a very old browser here. So you don't need to, to wait Meteor building different architectures. So that's the command that I'm using. It's exactly the same for iOS, as you can see here. And for web, it's also like pretty much the same. Uh, the only difference is that when I'm running just for web, I'm even excluding Cordova because I don't want to wait Meteor to build Cordova because I'm not running Cordova. But let me run Android here. When you run like for mobile apps, you can see a lot of logs here. Like this one was for iOS and just pay attention if there are errors or if there are just warnings or mess. Like for example, this part, it's just like some Cordova plugins. They have some code that are not like maybe the best way to write in Swift. So they are providing some errors, but it's some warnings, sorry, not errors. So double check if they are errors or if they are just warnings. And if you see some errors, like some weird errors, it's like, oh, this file is not there, but you know the file is there. I always recommend that you run this command here to remove this folder. Like this is the folder where Meteor cache your data, your Cordova data. So if it's not working, but it should be working or you don't understand why, it's good to clean this cache because sometimes Meteor try to reuse some files. And if you change these files, maybe these changes are not going to be applied to your application. So it's not required all the time, but if you see weird errors, please remove this Cordova build folder from your .meteor directory. Okay, here you can see everything that Meteor and Cordova is doing. You have a few assets coming from the internal system and probably my simulator is running again here. Okay, and also, oh, please click it. Also my database is here. Yes, now my database is connected. And I was, as I was explaining, you can see the player ID here is the same player ID that is here. EB9, EB9. Okay, that's the way that I can send push notifications. But how this player ID is in my database? Like, how did I save this? So that's this code. We start here, let's start from the beginning in the thinking about the execution, like Meteor Startup. Then I create an on login hook. That means when the user authenticates or when the user opens again the app, Meteor is going to resume the session and it's going to call this function as well. And you can see this probably in the logs here. Somewhere. Um, yeah, can you see here on login? That's coming from this line here, like my user ID. Okay. So every time that you open the app, Meteor is going to resume the session and it's going to trigger this code. And you are calling like a Meteor method here, providing the player ID. So the player ID is like a, a global variable here because this code is kind of weird because of the way Cordova works with callbacks. So we just hold this value here in our context and later you send when the on login hook is fired. Because the on login hook is going to be fired, like I'm just excluding if I'm not running Cordova, I don't want to run this code because this is going to break as this plugin is available only in Cordova environment. But when I'm running Cordova environment, I get a lot of data here. This is about universal link, I'm going to ignore, but I, I'm going to get like my one signal here. And with this configuration, I can initialize one signal. And I can also, I can initialize here, providing my ID. That's why I have my ID here in my preference, okay? So I can fetch my ID. If you just have one app all the time, you don't need this because your ID is going to be always the same. And I can also put a call back here. Did you remember that I said when I click a notification, when I click in the pop-up, I'm going to redirect to the correct route? That's because of this code. When a notification comes and the user interacts with the notification, 
Cordova is going to call this callback handle notification opener. So we can do any code here. In this case, I'm just getting the route from data, notification, payload, additional data. That's the way Cordova encodes the one signal encodes it to sit here and I get my route. Okay. Is app settings get the she's is asking if this is a uh, is part of meter. No, this is part of this plugin here, app settings. I'm using even a specific fork here from Pathbook, but maybe you could support this this plugin in a better way. But this is the is the plugin that we are using. Again, like all these plugins, they they are used to interact with the operational system in their cell phone. So you can have an HV code interacting with your JavaScript code. They create like this bridge. And it's usually not hard to understand these plugins. You can open the code, maybe you can fork it if you want to use in a different way. And when I get the route, I can I can go to this route. If I send a new push notification here, let's send this one more time. So I, I have a log that's going to display the push notification. So you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Let me clean this. Let's send a new push. I'm not going to type anything meaningful here. And like I can put route one, two, three, another one, two, three, four. And then I can send my test. A lot of logs here. Let's see, one, two, one, two, three, four. Can you see here? Like I receive like my additional data, the same that I'm parsing here. You can see it's the same. Notification, payload, additional data, route, and another pattern. So that's pretty cool because you can send to your native app anything that you want. And it's better because this is also offline because of course the user needs to be online to receive this data. But after that, this information is stored in the cell phone. So it's better to do this than like, oh, when the user clicks, I'm going to go to my server to check what I need to show. So if you are ready to show this data, it's offline. You can just get this data in display to the user and that can be really fast. So you can put any parameter here. In this case, I'm going to use the route to redirect to a specific page if I have it. And I also another hook that I can provide for Cordova is to attach the user ID from one signal to my player ID. And just a, a part here, like this is just important to do like this because I'm just attaching for authenticated user. So I wait for on login to attach this to a specific user. If you don't want to use the authenticated user, you could send this to your server already. Like maybe you just want to register all the devices. You don't want to register like attached to a specific user. So you don't need to wait for the on login to attach it. And you can maybe create another way to identify the user. Okay. And then you let one signal knows that you are ready and you end the initialization of this one signal plugin. This way you can receive push notifications, but let's let's see now how we send push notifications. Any questions about how to receive? No? Just send, yeah, okay. So let's, let's learn how to send push notifications. To send push notifications is basically the same as sending like emails. It's pretty, pretty easy. And let me just drink some water and I show you. Okay, Jarlin is asking, how can I change the route? Why are they are defined in Meteor? In this case, I am using React, so they are defined here in my React router switch, okay? And my go-to function is implemented probably in a very navy way here. I'm just using window location. Usually I use like React router to do the redirect as a single page application. But here, just to be simple, I just use I'm just using like window location, and I'm just checking if the URL is correct or not. But that's how I'm doing here. But you can also use any framework in any way that you are routing your apps. Okay, and also like the method call, like this Z player. Sorry, I didn't show the code. 
I forgot about this. So I sent the player ID. Remember, the player ID is the device identification from one signal. So this is a method. It's just a promisified version of a method, okay? But this is a method. And in this method, I'm just adding this player ID to my collection. So it's a very simple code. And if you are curious about like create collection, is a way that you can define collections and put a lot of stuff there. It's a package that's called Quave Collections. So you can do a lot of stuff inside this package, but it's it's a nice way that you can like have a, the same pattern for all your collections. And it just it, this is just a way to add a new method, so you can call like this. Okay. Uh, and the routes are here. Is it clear, darling? Okay, let's show how do I send a push notification. Okay, here is how is the code to send a push notification. Just provide a little bit of context. When the user go to the UI and click send the sequence, like the challenge in the game, I call a method and I provide the friend that he wants to send. So I go to the server and I add the sequence. So it's the game with logic here, it's not important. But the important part here is that I try to find if his friend already have a user in our database. And if so, I check if this user has player IDs. If so, I send the push notification. And the push notification, I need to put like the heading, I need to put the content, I need to put like the player ID, it's like who is going to receive it. And I can add additional data, like that's the route. So I can go to a specific page. And when I open this, you see just one call to the one signal API. So we have one signal API here. You need to put some headers. You need to put the authentication here. I'm not going to expose my REST API key. We can we need to have the headings with the language. In this case, it's English. The same for the content, like the heading is op optional. That's why I don't have it required here. The player IDs that I want to send, the app ID, the identification from my app, the data, and the web URL. This web URL, if I'm not mistaken, this is just for web pushes, okay? But one signal can also send web pushes. We can talk about this also in another call if you want. And that's it. Basically, we make a post request and it's done. It's going to send the this data to push notification to on signal. And I believe you can even see here our real pushes. Yeah, can you see? These are the tests that we are doing in the beginning of this call. And you can see the user click the push notification. You can consume this using the, the one signal API. So you can understand how your push notifications are, are performing. You can try to retarget your users. So it's it's a pretty powerful tool, one signal. Okay, so I showed how you prepare to receive the push and how you send the push. Sending the push, it's pretty straightforward. Let's see what else I would like to show because we are running out of time. Assets I did, mobile setup I did, push notification. I show how to run. Uh, okay, build script. This part about the build script, we need to do a few steps in order to have our APK and our APA here available. Uh, you, I, I'm going to share this script later. Actually, it's already here as well. Most of the things that I'm showing is already here. The example that I'm showing is just a little bit fresher, but it's the same idea. I think I have here the build script. Oh my God, here. Yeah, it's basically the same script. Okay, so you can check this today. But the idea is to run, Mitchell has a command to build the native app. So that's the main one. I'm just trying to find it. Yeah, it's here. So you can have this meter build and you need to provide the mobile settings, the server and many options here. This is just to be faster because you, you don't need to have cash because you're just want to build one time. And then you go to a specific folder and then you open the Xcode. That can be useful for you to open your app to see what's going on or to just like uh, analyze the code or to publish to the store manually but I'm going to show that you can also publish using Fastly, So you don't need to open if you don't want to, but it's you, this is the way that you can open on Xcode to run your iOS app. 
And for Android, you also need to sign your zip. APK is like a zip. So you need to sign and you need to have like some passwords from the store and everything. But that's basically the two commands. And for Android, it's simple because after this, you just need to upload this APK to your account in Google Play. For iOS, it's a little bit more challenging because you need to work with certificates and a lot of other things. And also for push notifications, you have the step-by-step -step here, how to set up this, okay? And I just did this setup like yesterday and it's working perfectly. So you have to create a Firebase, Firebase account for, for Google. And you can use like a provisioning tool from OneSignal to create the certificates that are necessary to connect with the iOS store. So it's it's really it's really easy just following these steps here. Freddy has a question. I think I've heard about a plan to integrate Meteor Galaxy to Fastlane to deploy apps with it. Is this a plan? Yes, that's one of the reasons that I'm doing this this meetup here to understand like how many users are using like Meteor with mobile and to also show that it's really easy to create new apps because we are planning to have a service where you can deploy your apps to the stores integrated with Galaxy. So you don't need to worry about a lot of configurations. And that would be a very, really nice service because you can create an app just with JavaScript and just with a few clicks, you could deploy it to the stores without any, any problems. That's the plan. We don't have a deadline for this, but we are, we are going to work on this probably soon. Are you able to build this application successful? And what are the versions that are using on Signal Cordova plugin? Yeah, I'm, I'm able, like this one, I just started this two days ago. I didn't try to build, but I, I have other apps that are using the same versions. Let me see the Cordova plugins. One signal. I'm using 2.8.0. Okay. And it, it should be working because I have other apps that are working with the same technology. I think this meeting is going to end automatically in 10 minutes. But remember, we have a social meeting after that. But I'm going to continue here. But later, remember that you can go here. Let me just show you. You can return to Dorado's Meetup. And then you can click in this social. And I'm going to open this meeting, OK? So you don't are, you are not lost. And you can continue talking about these technical questions here. I just want to show really fast a little bit about the last part, like how to publish. Like Here you create the artifacts, but how to publish using Fastlane. I'm going to use another project that I have here just to explain this. I already removed the password, so you don't need to worry about it. Uh, but the fast lane, you have a few files here that we need to have better explanations about. But the main idea is that you have like your app name in the version of fast lane. And we have a, a, the folder where the project is going to be built. But in general, you create like they call lanes, this concept of configurations, you use lanes and you just need to copy and paste this. But like you can understand, like some in some cases you have old projects on Xcode. So this command from Fastlane is going to upgrade it. Fastlane is a tool to help you to integrate with stores. You have this iOS entitlements. It's important also for notifications and universal links. You if you want to allow your user to open any link from your app. You also need to put this transport security to allow arbitrary loads. That's not the case for every app, but in many apps that I create, I, I need to do this. I don't remember exactly what was this one. If Rena is here, maybe he would remember. We want to sign the code in a different way, so we don't need to have this. Uh, we need to inform our provisioning profile, like that's iOS craziness with certificates and profiles. We also need to provide like our push service extension here and also our, our app name. We're going to have a better instructions about this. We need to choose like the version of Swift and also the two chain and also the version here. So we don't have errors using like old Swift versions or two modern Swift versions. We're gonna send a link why we have another uh, the other option. We can also update to test flight. You can create a team on test flight. If you are familiar with iOS, you have like a test flight that is a way to test before you release your app to the clients. If you're not using test flight, it can upload like the final version. And this is really nice because Fastlane is going to upload your app. 
it's going to wait for the first automatic review and later it's going to submit for the final review. So it's really nice because Fastlane does all the heavy work for you. Uh, this is just like the configurations and then we have like some commands to to also send to to iTunes connect it's basically the same like I really don't understand like all the lines here I just know like the main steps but Rena understands all the lines for those who doesn't know like Rena is also part of the core team of Meteor so if you have questions about this Rena is is open to to help in the forums or Slack or even the support tickets and for Android, as usual, like it's very simple, like Android is just this part here. So we just need to get the APK. You need to generate this, this Google Play JSON file here to, to provide that you have the capacity to deploy to, to your Google Play Store. And then just it, like Google Play is pretty easy. And like Fastlane is a very, very nice tool. Like there is a guy that is I think now he's full time, but before he was not full time. But the guy is, do, does like an amazing work. Like he does a lot of things here, and it's free. Uh, maybe they offer some service, but the part that we are using usually it's it's free. So it's it's really nice. Like should should check like this project because it's really good. Uh, let's see what else I have here before we are kicked out from this. So let's just finish the presentation. So I show a little bit the publish script from Fastlane, but we're going to, to publish this later. QA, we are doing QA as long as you are, we are talking here, we can continue in the social. If you are here, but you are new to Meteor, so this talk was not about like who, for who is new in Meteor, but you can follow our tutorials, step-by-step -step guides. We have for React, for Vue, for Svet, for, for Blaze. We have also for Angular, but the Angular is not up to date yet. Uh, we have the docs, we have the guide, you have the guide for the, the cloud that you can deploy your native apps to the cloud as well. So your native app is going to connect to the cloud without any problems. Every month or, or in some cases, twice a month or in some cases, each two months you have like podcast. So the last one was with the Qualia CTO. Qualia received like a Series D founding in last year. So they are using Mitchell for many, many years, and Luca is a really nice guy. So you should should listen to this last episode as well. We have the forums, we have the blogs, and we also have that's pretty new GitHub discussions enabled in Mitchell. So there is a place more to discuss feature requests in the future of Mitchell. And if you want to help Mitchell, you can join the community on Slack. Like we have a lot of members there. The, our Slack is growing. Uh, you can promote Meteor, creating apps like I did with this game and promote on social. You can send to us and you can help you promote your work as well. You can also join GitHub. You have instructions there how to contribute to the framework and you can do a lot of stuff there. And to wrap up here, I also have two YouTube channels. They are basically about Meteor because I use Meteor for so many years that when I talk about developing, I usually talk about Meteor as well. And I have one in English and one in Portuguese where I'm posting videos like every week. I was sick and I had to do some surgery. So in the last week, I don't have any new content there, but I plan to go back producing content every week to, to these channels as well. And if you want to follow me on Twitter or on Instagram, my handle is here. And that's it. Thank you for being here. And I hope you learned a little bit more about Meteor and mobile applications. Okay, let's see if we have more final questions. Oh, and we also have uh, Fred's right. We also have, because it's new and I forgot to put here, we also have Meteor examples. This Cordova is part of these examples and you have like it's Meteor, it's git, github.com slash Meteor slash examples. So you should check it out. Like we have examples with other frameworks there and it, it could be a nice place to start. Okay, now we have social. Social, we are going to probably mix like Portuguese and English. So it would be nice for us to be there. You can speak in the social part so we can have more questions and more conversations there. Less questions because I think we are going to be dropped here. When I install Meteor and start a fresh app, how much of what you have 
show comes already pre-configured. We we are you're not going to have a lot of a lot pre-configured, but it's going to work out of the box. You just need to add meet your ad platform Android and meet your ad platform iOS. But uh, everything that I show is pretty much you need to configure yourself. That was the part that I that I said. We are planning to try to prepare better this for you. So you have like a pre-configured project, but it's going to run the way that it is today. But of course, in almost every project, you need to add more configurations later. Yeah, and also, also Fred said that you could start with the example. By the way, I started this one on Wednesday with the example. I didn't start from scratch because the example was already there. It's examples slash Cordova. So you could start using this as a starting point. Let's go to the social one. And he, I think is going to join us as well. So you can talk there. See you in a few seconds. Bye-bye.